May 1996. Maury Walker with Formula One's lead commentator, Michael Schumacher with his first season with Ferrari yet to start his domination with them, and half of the 2023 grid wasn't even born yet. Okay, neither was I, to be honest. But this day, 27 years ago, played host to the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix, also known as perhaps the craziest Monaco Grand Prix ever, where of the 22 drivers, only three finished the race. And just a quick mention, I hope that everyone who has been affected by the flooding and everything in the Emilia-Romagna region of Italy is as safe as you can be. It was reigning two-time champion Michael Schumacher who qualified on pole for Ferrari from Damon Hill in the Williams in P2. They were followed by the two Benettons of John Alesi and Gerhard Berger in P3 and P4. Then David Coulthard's McLaren rounded off the top five using one of Schumacher's helmets as he needed one that wouldn't keep misting up in the wet conditions that had fallen on Monte Carlo that day and that was happening to his own helmets. Now before the race even started, there was already a car that was out of the race with Andrea Montermini, I butchered that pronunciation, he had crashed in the morning warm-up session and as a result would not be starting the race. So we're already one car down and the lights haven't even gone out yet. But when the lights did go out, there was carnage before the first lap even ended. A Jos Verstappen crashed at turn one, the minorities of Giancarlo Fisichella and Pedro Lamy were out on the first lap after they tangled, Schumacher, who had lost the lead to Hill at turn one, crashed just before Portier, and Rubens Barrichello spun out of the race just before Raskas. We're not even at the end of lap one, we're already six cars down. This was just the beginning, of course, because come the end of lap 10 of the 75 lap race, there were only 12 cars left running in the race. Uko Katayama and Ricardo Rossett went out from their own accidents on the slippery streets of the Principality, and Pedro Diniz and Gerhard Berger went out from failures on their cars. Seriously, like, what was it with Monaco and like the 2000s, 90s, 80s, and half of the grid losing the will to live? Things then died down for a period while well, about 20 laps or so, with Damon Hill continuing his commanding lead and was pulling away for Jean Lacey in P2, while Eddie Irvine was hiding up a train of cars ahead of him. But things were generally calm. It also was raining, so a dry line was beginning to form on the track, meaning that lured drivers into the pit lane for a change from the wet tires to the dry tires and also for refueling because F1 had refueling at this point. Hill did briefly lose the lead to Lacey during this time. Lacey had yet to make his pit stop, but the man who would go on to win the 1996 title did take back the lead just one lap later. After people had stopped, things resumed with Hill Hill leading, Lacey in second, Irvine third, Panis was up to fourth, and Coulthard rounded off the top five ahead of Herbert in the final points paying position of P6. But the calm, as was evident with this race, couldn't last forever. And indeed, it ended on lap 31 when the king of the pre-race grid walks, Martin Brundle, became the circuit's latest victim when he spun his way into retirement, and he was followed just under 10 laps later by race leader Damon Hill, whose engine blew. The race lead then went to Frenchman Jean Lacy, and again things died down for a bit uh, until he retired from the race with his suspension failure on lap 60, becoming the 13th retirement of the race. Only nine cars were left at this point. That handed the lead of the race to his fellow Frenchman Olivier Panis, who had started this race in P14, might I mention, and he'd been keeping his nose clean and avoiding all the carnage around him to quietly get himself up the order and to benefit from his rival's misfortunes around the streets that afternoon. While he was busy leading the race, about six laps later on lap 66, the sole remaining Williams car of Jack Villeneuve was contending with Luca Badoa in the 40 car, who was at this point six laps down on the race leader Panis. At Mirabel, Villeneuve was trying to sneak his way past the Italian, but it didn't quite go to plan as he found himself stuck between a Formula One car and a barrier. And a barrier ain't exactly a very movable object and Badoa wasn't exactly giving him much room. Badoa went up into the air off the front tire of the, of the Williams and both were sent out to the race, leaving just seven cars running. Yes, seven cars were all that was left at this point. However, as was the case with this incident-packed race, didn't stay like that for very long. 
Lab 71 came about and the sole remaining Ferrari of Eddie Irvine spun at the exact same place as his teammate did on the opening lap. Approaching from behind were the two Finns of Mika Salo and Mika Hakkinen. And as we all know, the streets of Monaco ain't all too wide, so avoiding a spun out car that's trying to get going again or avoiding a stopped car is not exactly the easiest thing to do. And it proved impossible for Salo as he went right into the back of Irvine and Hakkinen went into the back of his countrymen, sending all three out of the race just laps from the end, or should I say minutes from the end at this point, as the, the race clock was running down by now. And judging from the way Hakkinen got out of the car, he was none too pleased. Four cars were all that remained after that, and Olivier Panis crossed the line to take victory in Monaco, claiming a record he still holds now as the driver to win from the furthest back on the grid at Monaco, and becoming the last French driver to win a race until Pierre Gasly 24 years later. David Coulthard followed him across the line in P2, and Johnny Herbert took the flag 30 seconds later or so in P3, and was the last car to take the flag, as Heinz Harold Frenz and stopped in the pit lane. Only three cars of the 22 that qualified for the race took the checker flag. Absolutely insane. That is something that I very much doubt we will ever see again, and if we do, I have questions. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Bit of a different kind of video, but Monaco's coming up, so I thought, why not? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.